Okay, go ahead, Asita. For most of our history, man has had to fight nature to survive. But in this century, he is beginning to realize that in order to survive, he must protect the nature. These words by Jack Kusto has given paramount importance to ecosystem restoration and its protection. Good morning, everyone. Respected Principal, Ma'am, Professor Nirmal Jindal, Teacher in Charge. Dr. Rajiv Singh, Convener Prakriti Society, Dr. Anupam Sani, our esteemed guests today from Yamuna Biodiversity Park, Dr. Fayaz Khutsar, and Ms. Preeti Vora. So in this period of development, natural ecosystems are replaced with urban infrastructure, but the functions carried out by such ecosystems are lost in this process. Therefore, to learn more about ecosystem and its restoration, this event has been organized. Now, I would like to welcome our principal ma'am, Professor Nirmal Jindal, to share a few words with our students and speaker. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, our esteemed guests, uh, 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 Dr. Rajiv Singh, uh, TIC of Environment Studies Department, Dr. Anupam Sani, uh, the convener of uh, uh, the Environment Society, uh, all the faculty members and students, uh, I welcome you all to this virtual uh, tour of Yamuna Diversity Park. I think it is a very good initiative. And this uh, thing we have with us, uh, 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 Mr. Faizan uh, Kutzer, who is a scientist in charge of Yamuna Diversity Park. And Ms. Preeti Vora, who is a nature education officer. Uh, I think it's a very good initiative uh, to a virtual tour uh, of this Yamuna Diversity Park to our students. Uh, as uh, uh, it is mentioned, that uh, and uh, concerns us all. Uh, life, health, um, uh, our security is closely connected to the environment uh, because to survive, we take. These things happen in online mode. We will just wait for the network to rejoin. Yeah, so uh, uh, it's a very good uh, initiative uh, to have uh, a diversity park in Delhi. And I think our friends uh, should have gone physically uh, to have this tour, but due to pandemic, we cannot have that kind of real experience. Uh, yeah, we have tour and uh, travel restrictions. But uh, still, uh, by giving this kind of virtual tour, we are not deprived of the experience. Uh, students can still have uh, knowledge and understanding of this uh, ecosystem, that how uh, it is necessary to maintain the system, what kind of initiative can be taken uh, you know, to maintain biodiversity, uh, to uh, develop the healthy environment ecosystem. Uh, so, and there are some uh, benefits of this kind of virtual tour, and particularly in pandemic times. Uh, these kind of tours are very, very popular in different parts of the world. And uh, in India also, I, and I congratulate the Environment Society that in India also they are uh, uh, locating, they are trying to find out all these kind of virtual tours and they are giving exposure uh, to our students. So I'm sure that uh, uh, the, this tour will be very, very insightful and uh, students will have enriching experience uh, uh, about uh, uh, how this uh, park is created, why is it created, how is it uh, uh, helping in maintaining the environment um, ecosystem? So uh, this kind of knowledge and understanding can further encourage them uh, to develop these kind of initiatives, uh, uh, other kind of initiatives uh, to contribute to the environment security. Uh, so I
Okay. Okay. So on the on behalf of principal ma'am, good morning all of you. And welcome to this very special program we have organized today in collaboration of Yamuna Biodiversity Park. Like from last two years, we have been working on, of, in online mode and we're not able to go out on field trips, which are essential component of environmental studies department and course itself. So we have, right now we have gone a step ahead and brought nature to all the learners today. And to start with, I must quote Albert Einstein, who said that to look deep into a nature and you will, of course, understand everything better. So to share the amusing greens and wetlands of Yamuna Biodiversity Park, today we have among us Ms. Priti Vohra. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Fayaz was about to join, but he could not join because of his some busy schedule. And Ms. Priti Vora is also working in Yamuna Biodiversity Park. She is, uh, I must tell you, she is one of my colleagues who have, we have done masters together. And at the meanwhile, Priti, apart from doing masters in environmental studies, she is also uh, pursuing right now the PhD degree. And she is cur currently working as a nature education officer in Yamuna Biodiversity Park. So let us give a, a, a huge round of applause for our guest and she will guide us to the Yamuna Biodiversity Park in this yeah, virtual group. Over to you, Priti. Thank you so much, Dr. Anupam. And uh, thank you so much to the principal, ma'am. And she has rightly said that uh, in uh, many parts of the world, we, uh, people are having these types, types of virtual tours. And uh, we are very uh, pleased to say that, yes, in Delhi, we are organizing it. And uh, thank you to the college. Thank you to, uni thank you to the University of Delhi for, uh, you know, collaborating. And uh, this is a two-way process. We cannot do it on our own. So uh, uh, we, we are equally, we are sharing this uh, good thing that uh, Yamuna Biodiversity Park has started up something and colleges and university and your college also, you have come up with a good number and uh, with all the positive responses that in these two years, we are continually uh, giving these virtual visits to the to, to the people of uh, uh, Delhi. And we hope that uh, now very soon you will come to the park physically along with your teachers and you will visit it in person, right? So um, uh, yes, so we will start our visit to this Yamuna Biodiversity Park. So this is on, on, uh, on your screen, you will see, um, this is the main entrance of Yamuna Biodiversity Park. And where is this park lies? We, we will share all the things, why this park has been created and what is the need of creating such parks, especially in a city like Delhi. So you can see the top view of the park. This looks so green. Uh, the canopies are so dense, they're so high. And this is only one small portion of the park, which we have managed to click from uh, the top. Then you will also find uh, a beautiful wetland inside. Right, and uh, this wetland is very near to River Yamuna. So this park is situated on the floodplains of River Yamuna. So with this map, I think you will be able to uh, see where the park lies exactly. So you can see, this is River Yamuna, which is flowing in Delhi about 52 kilometers. And this park is very, very close to River Yamuna. This is on the floodplains of River Yamuna, right? So floodplains, as we all know, they are very fertile areas and uh, uh, they are very, uh, they have a potential to store river water and flood water. But unfortunately, if you see the floodplains of Delhi, they are badly destroyed and they are all occupied by for different purposes. So that is why uh, if you see, especially the, uh, this, this portion, this Yamuna Biodiversity Park Phase 1, uh, this was highly degraded and it was all barren when this land was given in 2002. Uh, uh, this land belongs to DDA and it is a collaborative work of University of Delhi, CEMDE Department, Center for Environment Management of Degraded Ecosystem and Delhi Development Authority, right? So this model was proposed by Professor C.R. Babu, who, uh, who, uh, who is a very renowned ecologist and who was our pro-vice chancellor also in 2005 and six, right? So this model was given by Sir and under his guidance, a team of scientists were formed. And this team includes people from different areas, from wildlife, from botany, from, uh, from, uh, from, 
from zoology background from entomology and from different areas right so they all collab collaborated their right scientific knowledge and now you can see a three layered forest and a very beautiful restored urban forest of delhi in this area so how this uh, work was done how we started with the journey i'll share with you all the details right so what was the problem in this area uh, this area was highly saline as you can see there is a highly elevated road uh, in between river yamuna and this part of the uh, uh, flood plain so because of the construction of this road flood water was not able to come to this park that is why this area becomes inactive right and uh, over a period of time a high amount of salt was getting deposited here which makes this land barren in 2002 when this land was given but on the other hand if you see the uh, part 2 of the park which is phase 2 of the park which is in, it is in much bigger area uh this is 300 acres this is 157 they all are they both are connected to the corridor and the total area is 457 acres right so you can see this elevated highly elevated road is taking a turn from here and this all area is open to the river so this becomes a active flood plain so every year when there is uh, uh like uh, more water in river yamuna and the when uh, when river yamuna uh, overspills the water the excess water is channelized and goes to the wetlands of yamuna biodiversity park phase 2 so in phase 2 you will find a 100 acres huge wetland and all the uh, nearby areas you can see that the area is closely inhabited by the uh, people so uh, their their houses their cattle their agricultural fields they all they all get saved uh, from the flood water because it is properly channelized to this area right so uh, meanwhile we'll discuss what are wetlands how wetlands are important so uh, in this upcoming slide you will be able to see that how a barren land has been turned into a fertile or good land so in so in the initial years uh, when in 2002 when this land was given we found that the salt was very high in the soil and it was very uh, difficult to grow any plant in this in this type of soil so we thought that uh, Uh, we will bring more and more number of halophytes to this soil halophytes are the plants which grows very well into the salty region so initially the salt loving plants were introduced more and more in number they were brought uh, from all the areas like from haryana from uh, uttar pradesh from where the river yamuna was flowing after that few years when we were able to take out excess salt from the soil and the soil ph came to its neutral number then we started planting more than 100 species of native grasses in this area why grasses were chosen first because grass uh, they play a very grass grasses actually play a very important role in you know turning your soil into a good soil first of all they hold the soil properly so the soil erosion can be uh, you know uh, can be stopped and also they reduce the surface runoff when whenever there is rainfall uh, grasses along with their roots they take all that Uh, rain water deep into the soil make it moist and make it favorable uh, for other plants to grow and for insects to come right so this is this this was how we um, uh, we maintain our good soil in the park again and nothing was brought from outside except few plants in the initial time the soil was uh, as it is which was uh, given to us in the initial time after that we introduced some of the important grasses uh, keeping in mind that these grasses will uh, bring lot of uh, uh, herbivores and insects and birds in the upcoming years so this was one grass which was introduced on uh, on a large area this is sporobolus grass and this is eaten by many herbivores so we thought that if we will introduce more and more grasses it will attract more and more herbivores then small carnivores will come so all that thought was made in mind uh, in the initial days and grasses also bring a lot of insects also so uh, in if if uh, if insect population is good there then uh, uh, there might be a possibility that birds will also follow for eating insects and all so this this is how different grasses were introduced uh, this this is another grass this is known as vetiveria or khas grass and this grass grows very well on the 
uh, flat plain region so in uh, when you move inside the park you will find that uh, there are different patches of grasses everywhere and keeping in mind if the area is low lying if the area is having a good subsoil aquifer means the ground water is high then what kind of grass can grow there so this is one of the grass which which can hold a lot of uh, which which can stand actually in a lot of water so during the time of flooding if uh, if your fields or if your area is having this grass so this grass can survive right so why khas is important uh, khas is important because uh, uh, the grains of the khas grass is eaten by many birds like uh, very recently we have done our bird count and it was published in all the newspapers covering that uh, yamuna biodiversity park has reported 102 species of birds just in 2 hours so uh, this is the reason that uh, we have different uh, variety of plants here which includes uh, grasses which includes trees so every time the birds are having good food availability in the form of fruits and seeds of different grasses right so uh, another grass which was introduced is this desmostachia bipinnata or this the common name is kush grass kush is a very sacred grass in uh, in many uh, hindu ceremonies you must have seen if uh, if you are a part of that program right so but uh, but for a scientific reason kush is important because it grows very well in the salty region and it is a very good habitat of many uh, uh, many of the herbivores as you can see it is very dense so it provides a very good shelter to many snakes many herbivores even peacocks also peafowls they lay their eggs uh, in these hides right so this is how we have different grasslands here uh, another grass which was very important is this uh, sankras grass and this grass uh, played a very important role by uh, fixing different micronutrients for the soil so uh, grasses you, uh, now 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 you can see they can play a very important role they not only give the green cover but they improve the soil quality they retain the soil moisture and they are a uh, they are they are completely um, a very important ecosystem for the forest if your grasslands are good you can expect a good forest also right so the next task was to introduce some of the con uh, fruit con uh, fruit trees and we named this area as a conservatory of fruit plants uh, we thought that uh, uh, that if fruit yielding trees will would be there then uh, there might be a possibility that birds would like to come the frugivore birds like uh, parakeets in uh, asian quail and uh, uh, different types of small birds bulbul and all they will come and they will feed on the fruits so what type of fruit trees we should grow that was a very big task so we uh, so we interacted with different people living uh, all along the sides of river yamuna we visited uh, uh, haryana we visited uttar pradesh and we talked to people that what kind of eco uh, you know forest were there what kind of food fruit trees were there so uh, as per our discussion we found that there were many fruit yielding trees like uh i'll i'll be showing you few of the trees like this is khirni khirni is a yellow colored fruit uh, and uh, very soon this fruit will come on the trees now the trees are already prepared fruiting starts from march to june and there is uh, khirni is a small yellow colored fruit which is very sweet in taste and um, uh the fruiting time is very less around 1 or 1.5 months only not more than that and uh, during this period uh, you will find a lot of uh, fruit eating birds like yellow footed green pigeons bulbuls quail parakeets squirrels also in fact so a uh, pomegranate will be there so throughout the year you will find that fruiting is there so food availability availability resting spaces for the birds uh, and uh, nesting material for the birds are here right so this is tamarind very popular uh, fruit in our kitchens and we know uh, uh, how it tastes like and uh, what are the benefits of it so uh, similarly birds also like to eat the pulp and all these trees they are important trees of river yamuna uh, forest region earlier when river yamuna was very healthy and the forests were very good so all these types of trees were there they all are native right so this is chiku tree sapota we call it manalkara sapota and uh, these days also a lot of uh, chikus are there on the trees which are eaten by many birds 
दिस इज फेरोनिया लिमोनिया ट्री और इन हिंदी वी कॉल इट कैथा और वो डैपल एंड दिस दिस स्मॉल फ्रूट दिस ऑल्सो uh this is very hard from outside but very juicy and pulpy from inside and uh, this is also eaten by many mammals lean guys and all right so like this you will find many old and young trees in the park some are very recent plantation some are very old plantation so this is acacia nilotica babool tree uh which is very old tree and uh, when we visit in the park we usually stand under the under the shade of this tree and we count the different benefits uh how this tree is used for um uh, uh, different purposes uh, a kind of a gum is secreted from the tree which is used in many uh, which is used for many purposes uh, the bark is also having medicinal property and uh, which is which is used in toothpaste and we call it babool and uh, even the twigs the, the the dry twigs of the tree is used for making nest by many birds these days you will find a lot of birds are busy in making nest uh, they have a they have a character that before monsoon uh, they make their nest and they lay their eggs so that in monsoon time they have plenty of small insects for their young ones right so all are busy in uh, taking material and you know making the nest and the fruits when the when when fruits come on this tree a lot of small birds uh, like uh, purple sunbird uh, house sparrows and other prinias and small munias they all are busy in eating the fruits of the tree right so uh, this is how the trees are benefiting the birds now we are moving towards our wetland area and uh, and uh, in phase 1 we are having two wetlands a deep wetland and narrow shallow wetland so this is the way from where we uh, move to our wetland area yes so this is our deep wetland and why the name is deep wetland because its depth is around uh, 14 15 feet deep this area was uh, not filled with water like this this was this was a marshy area and with the help of some indicator plants uh, now you can see some some plants are there are many plants actually so these grasses and the, this grass this is typha this is tamarix uh, that grass is phragmites so all these plants are indicator plants and uh, they give you a hint that if you dig here you will get a good ground water level is here so we did the same um, i'll show you in the different next picture yes so this is how the wetland was developed in 2004 this was a marshy area and uh, but the but uh, there are some indicator plants you can see at the back and uh, with, uh, when we did the marking we started digging we took out a lot of soil from the uh, ground and uh, that soil was used for making different mounds so initially there was no food or no plant inside the wetland so we thought that if we want to attract our uh, birds especially the resident and migratory birds then we need to have some food for them so initially uh, different species of fishes were added uh which were native of river yamuna so all those fishes were added in the in this wetland and uh, plantation was done at different level that your wetland is a complete ecosystem in it so it should have plants uh under the water and floating vegetation also and shoreline vegetation also so uh, initially we you, we added a lot of uh, submerged vegetation that became a you know source of oxygen for the wetland and for the fishes and it became the food for the zooplankton also and in 2005 onwards we started receiving our first flock of migratory birds until date we are having a lot of migratory birds in the park so this was how a lot of fishes you can see they were added initially and they are they are in good number now and all these migratory birds which are coming from different parts of the world they are feeding on fishes they are feeding on small plants which are deep into the water so like this you will find uh, there are different birds like northern shovelers spin tails common coot uh, you know and different birds they migrate from different parts of the world every year uh, at the end of september Uh, and in the beginning of october we start receiving our migratory birds this year also we are having them in good number and from 23 to 26 uh, of february we celebrated our uh, bird assessment week so in that we uh, we walked into the park at different on different trails and we counted the different numbers of migratory and other birds that we have in park so very soon that data will also be published and you will get to know about what kind of birds were there so this is uh, these are uh, 
red crested pochard these are again the water birds and or the ducks they are again migratory and uh, yamuna biodiversity park was the only home initially uh, for these ducks so a lot of birders a lot of people they those who have interest in birding and uh, uh, they they come and they you know record their movements and they uh, take the take different pictures and do different types of studies on them so this is a bird which is uh, which is uh, which comes very early and uh, it will stay here till march this is great cormorant uh, this comes from china and some parts of lay and ladakh this to this bird totally feeds on small fishes so for small fishes uh, uh, this uh, i mean this bird is having a lot of uh, you know uh, food available in our wetland so you will find them in good number apart from migratory birds uh, yamuna biodiversity park is also having a lot of resident birds like pond heron uh, this is oriental darter which is also known as snake bird then this is cattle egret white throated kingfisher okay and small other small birds many many birds you will find in the park this is another uh, second wetland which is narrow shallow wetland and you will find that uh, the the width is uh not very much and the depth is also not uh, it, it is not also so deep so the name is narrow shallow wetland and this wetland replicates river yamuna we thought that uh, we will uh, we will we will give it we actually tried to give a look of river yamuna so that a lot of bird species which are actually lost they can come and they can reside in the forest and in these uh, grass patches and uh, this uh, this the length of this wetland is about 1.5 km long and on both sides you will find a thick forest of uh, phragmites grass and tamarix tree and uh, there was a time uh, when river yamuna was so healthy there used to be some birds uh, like uh, black crown night heron and some other birds which they they actually used to make their nest in these forest communities but unfortunately we have lost our pristine forest and all those birds they have locally extended from river yamuna so when this wetland was created and these grasses were planted after few years we found that the nesting was back and that was the very positive sign and a very pleasurable moment that we again managed to you know restore and uh, uh, to restore their habitat and now they are coming back again so this is a very beautiful bird black crown night heron and you can see the nesting and somewhere you will find the chicks and eggs and this bird specially it requires very shallow water and small fishes and this this type of vegetation where they can uh, make their nest and you will find uh, from uh, in the months of may and june you will find more than 1500 nest at a time in this area and another success which was which we recorded uh, was with this snake this is sea boldy snake which is a which is seen in delhi after 60 years this was last seen in delhi in 1942 as per geological survey of india and this was locally extinct because this snake uh, prefers to live in the marshy areas near the wetlands and delhi has lost all of its wetlands all the major wetlands so this was locally extinct and this was again seen in yamuna biodiversity park in 2000 uh, in uh, um, after 60 years this was again seen so that was a good uh, you know uh, that was a very good news for all of us and this snake is again breeding which is again a very positive sign right so uh, near the water bodies you will find different creatures different insects like these are very important insects uh, this is dragon fly the upper one and this is damsel fly both the insects are very very helpful and they are the indicator of a healthy wetland ecosystem uh, isko hum helicopter bhi bolte the yaad hai agar aapko agar aapne kabhi bachpan mein isko dekha ho earlier they used to be in a very good number near our houses uh, but unfortunately we have lost all our fresh water ecosystems and we have lost uh, all our i mean uh, whatever the lakes we are having they are not uh, healthy they are not uh, in good uh, shape so uh, you will find more and more number of mosquitoes in your areas and like i am feeling that there are mosquitoes in winter months also so they have adapted right but what is the role of this in insect we call it uh, we we, uh, we actually call it controller of many uh, mosquito borne diseases because this insect it lays its eggs on the floating vegetation like we see in our wetland uh, when the when the small uh, you know uh, new 
shoots of the grasses and the floating vegetation when they come this insect they lay their eggs on that vegetation and the nymphs or the young ones or the eggs of uh, this insect it lays in the uh, it stays in the water for around 4 months so the eggs or the larva they eat the larva of mosquito and the adult dragonfly will eat the adult mosquito thereby they control the uh, population of mosquito so if you are standing near the water uh, or near the wetland in the park you will never get a mosquito bite right uh, so this is how they are biological controller of many diseases and if you see uh, like delhi or always delhi suffers a lot and last year also the number was so horrifying the dengue and malaria cases and uh, every common people that you know they are either suffering from any of these diseases so it is very you know a horrifying scene that uh, we are not having our uh, clean water bodies and the insects like dragon flies and tensile flies are not coming and they are not con- they are not able to control actually the population of mosquitoes now we will take a turn and we will go into our deep forest area this is the reserved forest area and you will find that uh, this is more dense and it has vegetation on different layers on the ground and the middle canopy and the top canopy you will find right and uh, in this area you will find that uh, all the native plants of the area are grown here right like this you will find uh, and what are the trees what are the you know forest trees which are here so you will find the uh uh terminalia arjun tree usko hum arjun ka ped bhi bolte hain then elbizia is there uh, jamun is there kadam ka ped jo hai that is there right so all these aapka jo beautia hai dhak ka tree hai kesia fistula amalta so they all uh, belong to the native forest community of delhi right and it, when when you walk in this area you will find that uh, the the uh, especially the pm 2.5 and pm 1 uh, it is Uh, that content is very less here because all that dust is filtered and then the clean air is given by the trees and uh, you will find that dust particles are settled on different layers so very less dust particles are inhaled by you and the uh, this area is uh, you know a little bit cooler than the outside area and it maintains the local temperature also so wherever the trees and the plants are you will find a good thick leaf litter all around and what is the role of this thick leaf lit, uh, leaf litter it uh, it attracts it attracts lots of uh, uh, different insects and uh, a lot of uh, different microbes they will come and they will break down these leaves and uh, it is a very good habitat of many of the insects like termites ants and aphids and also you will find snakes are doing hibernation under the you know uh, uh, under the uh, under under these leaves and it provides them warmth especially in the winter time right and one of the very important uses is that uh, these all are dry leaves and uh, when they were green they have absorbed a lot of carbon from the atmosphere that they do in, that all plants do in photosynthesis right so when the leaf is drying and it is coming on the ground all that carbon which was fixed by the plant is going in, into the soil again right and we call it carbon sequestration which is very important otherwise at many places you will find that people collect leaves and they burn it and they again release that carbon that is again in a huge number huge amount it is they are releasing it back into the air so uh, one should stop if you see people doing uh, burning and other activities with the leaves so this is bamboo and bamboo is a very ideal home for many of the snakes they find very easy way to go inside so this is how you will find a very simplified chain food chain here on the leaf litter the aphids were there these are aphids and they are uh, they are on the leaves and the insects are coming to like uh, different praying mantis and other insects they are coming to eat the aphids then a garden lizard has come to eat this uh, praying mantis and for this garden lizard there must be a shikra or a king fisher sitting on the top of the tree so you can find the food chain is progressing from the ground which is very important uh, you will also find a lot of uh, insects and other uh, creatures especially they are dung beetles and they are taking the excreta or the dung of animals into the soil back again and releasing the important nutrients in, into the soil uh, you will also find many of the uh, important 
creatures on the ground like bagworm this is a caterpillar feeding on small insects and grasses and it has a bag like structure on its body which it, it has it has made for its own protection during the egg laying time uh, this kind of structure is made by the insect so that they can safely keep their eggs inside and at the time of danger this uh, this whole caterpillar moves inside the this bag so like this every tiny creature plays a very important role uh, you will also find uh, reptiles in the park which also plays a very important role in food chain and uh, like this is a picture of a rat snake and rat snakes are um, uh, they actually control the population of population of rats and rodents so uh, they are also known as the farmers friends and in fields they are very helpful for the farmers by they because they control the population of rodents otherwise all the fields they get damaged by the rodents attack okay so in park we have uh, 11 different species of snakes and out of them three are venomous and rest, rest others are non venomous we are also having monitor lizards Uh, so in herbivores, uh, now you can see that the grasslands, which were the, the, the grasses, which were you know planted initially, uh, keeping in mind that uh, the they will attract lots of herbivores. So uh, that was again proven right, and uh, uh, we have lot of uh, herbivores like uh, we have Indian hare, we have uh, blue bull, right, and they all uh, feed on grasses. Then we have some granivore birds. Which are again using the seeds of grasses. This is silver bill munia or Indian silver bill is the name. Then we have scaly breasted munias. So I mean, these days you will find a lot of uh, these small uh, prinias and munias feeding on the uh, seeds of different grasses, and they are easily identify identifiable if you if you are if you have a little bit knowledge of these birds and if you uh, you know see their behavior. So you you can easily find them in good numbers. This is red avadavid. The upper one is male and then female. Then tri-colored munia again feeding on the grasses and their seeds. So you can see that how these grasses are helpful. Uh, now on the flowering plants, uh, before the fruiting, the flower comes and on these flowers you will find a lot of pollinators. Like these days we have uh, we have flowers on the dates. Khajur paste time flowering here. So you will find thousands of small uh, honeybees and wasps. They are taking nectar and uh, they will help in cross pollination. And in summers, you will find thousands of fruits hanging on the Khajur tree. So this is how pollinators are very important. And uh, uh, I remember uh, uh, like you have shared one quote of Albert Einstein uh, before the beginning of the session. I would also like to quote that Albert Einstein once uh, said that if pollinators are removed from the environment, human beings will only be able to survive for another four years because they are the biggest source of our food, right? So one should, you know, protect them, save them, and we should not, not use pesticides at all, right? So you will find different insects like praying mantis feeding on different insects and other insects like grasshoppers feeding on different uh, grains and grasses and they again become a very important part in food chains so and uh, uh, other fruit eating birds like uh, this is red vented bulbul the nation coil coppersmith barbage yellow footed green pigeon all these birds are very active these days because there are plenty of fruits uh, there on the trees and uh, this is coppersmith barbet and uh, you will find this bird very active even in urban areas you will you will if you pay little bit attention in morning and evening hours you can easily uh, you know uh, record the call or you can identify this bird this birds usually sit on the top canopy of the trees and uh, these days they are producing some mating calls and uh, uh, for continuous for hours and hours you can listen this sound and uh, with its small beak you can uh, you can see this bird making some holes in the dead logs or dead woods and in in that uh, cozy home they live with their young ones uh, before the monsoon this whole exercise would be done by this small bird so that uh, uh, it can safely live with its chicks inside 
right so you now you can see the birds they are they are making nest for themselves and which is a very positive sign that uh, yes it, now i mean you are able to secure the habitat they are having uh, food security they have they are having resting spaces for perching they are having uh, different nesting material so that then all i mean the, if 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 the total security is provided to them then then only they will think of laying eggs and uh, making nest so every bird's requirement is totally different like this is purple sunbird you can see uh, it uh, it brings nectar and different insects from the flowers and so its the requirement for making a nest is entirely different from the spotted owlet right so this is spotted owlet and uh, the difference in the nest and the habitat is totally different a uh, park is also having a good population of indian uh, wild boar or uh, wild pigs you can see and they are very active during night uh, we are also having a good population of uh, wild this is a uh, blue bull uh, this is not actually a uh, guy we hum usko hindi mein neel gaye bol dete hain but this is this belongs to antelope family the largest deer we have in india and this is endemic to india only and the male is like this is a male to so bluish gray in color female is slightly dull in color or delhi ka state animal bhi hai neel gaye this is indian civet this is also nocturnal jungle cat right so you will find some uh, small mammals also they are carnivore and yes we had uh, one leopard in park in 2016 uh and this was a 3 year old male leopard and it was in search of its territory and it came on its own uh, using river yamuna as a corridor and um, reached to phase 2 then phase 1 uh and it stayed in the park for around 22 days but uh the people and the forest departments of delhi they were uh, they were not i mean comfortable uh, with the presence of the leopard in the uh, in this area because the human habitation is so closely uh, living near the park so this leopard was rescued and shifted to uttarakhand in a bigger national park and uh, uh, like i told that uh, this leopard was in search of its territory and uh, 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 so during that 22 days of its uh, time here it killed few neel gai calves it was having a plenty of food for it and that uh, that's how uh, the leopard was managing and the leopard was willing to live but people were not so we are hoping that uh, yes park will again welcome a big cat and that will be a final destination for the leopard also so uh, apart from the uh, forest reserve zones we are also having some uh, different modules for the general public like we are having medicinal herbal garden and if and this in this medicinal herbal garden we are having uh, more than 250 species of medicinal plants which we have planted for the general public so that they can understand that uh, what is the plant and what product product we get from it and how we are using it in our daily lives so like this is a plant this is uh, vajradanti barleria prionitis and the leaves are highly medicinal the extract of the leaves is used in different uh, toothpaste uh, like vico brand vico is a company which like we are we are also having isab we use for uh, for treating different uh, uh shamak related diseases right is a goal then we are having some other plants like this is this is hadjor on the on the left side and why the name is hadjor because in fractured bones this plant helps a lot and it uh, it heals the fractured bones quickly this is this is known as ratti it has beautiful red colored seeds uh, which were as um, a standardized unit for measuring gold right you must have heard about ratti that eight ratti eight ratti is equal to leaves when boiled uh, with water patients who are having high fever it gives relief from that this is akarkara it will take few seconds to come on your screen we can see the rati slide 
हाँ 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 इट इज टेकिंग आई मीन द नेटवर्क इज स्लो Yes, now it is. So this yellow colored uh, flower is very, very helpful, and it is given. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, as per uh, ancient Ayurveda text, these flowers were used for giving uh, local anesthesia and for uh, for toothache and other pains, post surgical pains. Uh, this flower is very, very helpful. Uh, uh, this is Akarkara, and this is Satavar. The dry roots are available on all the Ayurveda stores, and this boost up the. Immunity and other uses also uh, will give you relief from uh, cough-related problems. We are also maintaining a small pond, uh, water lily pond in medicinal herbal garden. And uh, in the next slide, you will be able to see. Yeah, in this. So this uh, this small pond is having a lot of medicinal plants in it: submerged vegetation and flow. floating vegetation and shoreline vegetation especially on the corners you will find uh, scent uh, centella plant and bacopa monnerai bacopa monnerai is brahmi booty uh, which is used for enhancing memory so uh, like this you will find a lot of different plants in in this pond and you will also find uh, different turtles small turtles and water snakes and fishes inside this pond right so from here now we will take a turn and we will go to butterfly conservatory and butterfly conservatory is again a very beautiful section of the park where uh, we have planted both host plants and nectar plants for our butterflies and um, uh, yamuna biodiversity park is having more than 75 species of butterflies in our butterfly conservatory and uh, these days butterflies have started coming again it's, as it is a spring season so flowering is all around and in winters uh, they they were very few in number because they are cold blooded so they cannot survive in such a cold weather so in uh, so when you visit our butterfly conservatory you will find a lot of different host plants are there and uh, different uh, cycles of butterflies are there starting from the caterpillars like this is the caterpillar of small salmonella butterfly this is a plain tiger butterfly and their host plants are totally different and you will also find their different stages like from egg to pupa and then uh, sorry this is caterpillar initial stage of pupa then final stage of pupa and then the emergence of uh, adult butterfly so you will find uh, the like this was of common crow butterfly so like this you will find different butterflies every year in the month of october we do butterfly census so for another 4 5 days we count the number of butterflies and a lot of college students uh, they join us in uh, this activity you can also part for the same so this is how you can see butterfly and butterflies they also become a very important part in food chain you can see caterpillars are eaten by many birds even spiders they eat butterflies praying mantis birds also eat butterflies right and butterflies are a very i mean they are the most important source of pollinator as pollinators but in food chain also they play a very important role right and the small bird is eaten by a raptor or a large bird so this is how you can see the energy flows in ecosystem and uh, from from flower to nectar to small butterfly to caterpillar then birds then a big bird so you can see the whole tropic structure is here this is our nature interpretation center where we assemble when we come back from our virtual visit here we have different exhibits a small documentary for the students and a lot of healthy discussion takes place in this area students have a lot of information to read they share their thoughts and now they realize that yes we have problems in environment but this park is like a solution and this park is like a living laboratory for many people and whatever the theory we are reading you can see that theory in practical here that how it is implemented yes our river is polluted and uh, uh, we are responsible for it and now we are again responsible to clean it and we have the solution so yamuna biodiversity park gives you the solution that uh, how to clean river uh, how 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 the flood water or the rain water can be restored in the flood plains or in the wetland areas right and um, uh, we we started with this park in 2002 after this uh, uh, a different park was created at aravalli which is restoring the aravalli forest and aravalli hill ranges in vasant vasant bihar and uh, now we have chain of seven biodiversity parks in delhi which are spread across in different degraded pieces of land and this all is a scientific process and uh, you can any time you can visit the park but in a small number 
okay we have uh, we have started uh, again the physical visits in the park and in in a group of 3 4 4 or 5 people you can come and you can visit right so this was all about biodiversity parks i hope this was uh, useful for you and very soon you will be visiting this area right so if you have any questions or any query you can uh, you can call uh, students can, can call. also uh, students and in fact faculty members can also raise their hands so that we can individual allow them to take the question and also manish and chandranshu uh, will take care of the question answer session over to you manish uh thank you so much ma'am uh, for just okay one minute yes am i audible Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us this beautiful insight for the nature's bounty. And uh, I hope our students, as well as us, we are uh, full with the information about the awareness, how to restore the ecosystem. And uh, definitely, we talked about every terms in whatever we were teaching to our students in this semester. We talked about. uh ecosystem succession we talked about restoration and yamuna biodiversity park is one of the very prevalent example of all of this we talked uh, you talked about how the wetland is uh, the cradle for the biodiversity so uh, i got certain questions from my students like ki uh, how frequently we can go for this conservation program in the urban setup and what should be our mindset for this conservation program so that is a very generalized question ma'am but uh, because these are the students question these are the beginner question so this is one of the simple question i can ask you over to you ma'am priti ma'am are you listening to me can you please repeat the question again uh what should be the beginners mindset for this herbal uh, urban kind of restoration uh, this is just a question i got from one of my student uh, what should be our mindset uh, basically he was asking about the kind of awareness we have to inculcate to start with this urban ecosystem eco uh, eco restoration so what should yes, be in yes, our yes. mind yeah so as a common man or as a citizen of delhi your first thing is to know more about uh, the area where you are living like uh, like many a times when i receive groups na i usually ask them that how many of you have visited river yamuna how many of you have seen aravalli hill ranges and how much aware you are about the issues so first of all try to visit those sites like the degraded sites go and visit uh, ridge area and see at, or the central ridge area or see what kind of plantation is there what is the problem there go and talk to the people and if you are coming to the biodiversity parks you will get a chance to interact with the scientists here with uh, with the with the people uh, different people who are working here so you can come and you can see that what were the actually issues uh, and uh, how those issues are affecting uh, the local flora and fauna of delhi and why there is a need of doing all such activities like and like here we have all kinds of uh, exhibits and all the informations that like you can see that how uh, uh, how the river and the wetlands were affected so uh, for a common man the basic mindset is to uh, get uh, first of all see what is the problem and then finding a solution for it and solution is right in front of you in the form of these uh, uh, wetlands so like different park that you visit na it has different information to say that if you if you see that river yamuna is highly polluted and uh, and uh, what to do about it so you can visit neela hoz biodiversity park you can go to kalandi biodiversity park there you will find that how the sewage water the untreated sewage is cleaned by different grasses and different plants and that uh, how after different you know cycles uh, how that sewage water is turning into a clean water and you you will find fishes and uh, you know, you will find uh, resident and migratory birds in that lake so come up with a problem and see what how it is going to affect Uh, us how it is going to affect the local flora fauna how it is going to affect environment and what is a possible solution for it so you will definitely enjoy it right i hope uh, answers for many of the people right there it is kind of at the answer ki sabke 
fulfill ho gaye honge answer so over to you chandran so next question if you are getting any questions from me uh, first of all thank you for the presentation ma'am uh, i for most of the student this is first of their interaction but for most of the faculty here we have been to yvp as students ourselves so this was really a nostalgic and a very familiar thing to hear from, uh, hear from you guys again couple of questions that i got again since these students are just beginning with their ecology they have very uh, beginner level question but equally important ones one of these was the economics like what was the uh, a particular let me quote over that him the question the student asked was hmm, just a second how difficult was it to set up this entire ecosystem and what was uh, what exactly inspired the uh, the people of the cmd and the yamuna biodiversity management to set up this entire thing to begin with what were the problems that you faced while yes. in the initial phase yeah so it is very interesting and uh, uh, i mean uh, i have joined with this park uh, very recently i mean oh, hardly 4 years but the park was there since 2002 so Uh, i have also heard from my seniors and in the discussions that how this journey began so like uh, cm cmd is a very old department in uh, in uh, university of delhi and uh, when uh, when when the uh, delhi government and the lieutenant governor of that time they realized that yamuna is getting uh, highly polluted and air quality is highly getting degraded so they consulted different you know uh, ecologists and different uh, people of uh, of of uh, of different universities and then when they came to professor c r babu and uh, they claimed that you you ecologist and you environmentalist you always say that uh, uh, environment is getting degraded and you are and we citizens we are not doing anything so why don't you do anything huh? and you have all the knowledge and all the resources then that thought strike in mind that uh, uh what we can do like uh, we we are having no fresh land to grow something on that we are all we are all only having this degraded piece of land so at that time professor babu asked that give me 10 years time and i'll try to do something on this piece of land so uh, now you can see that with the right direction and right scientific knowledge and a dedicated team and willing people who actually wants to connect with this thing and uh, they all uh, you know combined together and a lot of people from university of delhi are involved in it and still i mean uh, they are they are involved in it and uh, i must say that each and every student of uh, university of delhi like you are you are today you are listening to all this and maybe you will you know spread this awareness to many people and you will come to the park and you will you will also try to do some kind of internship or get connected with the park so this is how a dedicated team was formed right so at that time there were a lot of challenges because uh, the nearby community was not at all supporting they thought that their land has been occupied by the government although they were given compensation and uh, initially we faced some challenges like people used to throw their home garbage and their animal dung inside the park they used to come to you know destroy the plants and other things and many a times we we faced the issues like forest fire and all if you are not uh, you know cooperating with them if you are, if you are not allowing them to uh, uh, you know uh, come and uh, take some portion of the park for different purposes so what they will do they will just throw a uh, you know burning matchstick inside your park and that is enough in the dry season so over these years we have realized that uh, how to live in harmony with the people and how to you know invite them on different occasions and um, uh how to you know uh, involve them in this conservation part so uh, those were some of the challenges but now we are realizing that now the in these uh, 18 or 20 years uh, yes we have we are seeing a change in people's attitude also and they are very frequently coming to the park and many of the workers who are working in the park especially the malis uh, they belong to the nearby community only so now they understand and they you know they they go back and they uh, and they give this kind of information that park is very helpful and it, and because of the park you can you will find that you know their drainage system has been improved and a big flyover has been constructed so they are they are commuting uh, very well to every places right and the property rates has been revised a lot of people they want to come and they want to live near the park they want their windows to get open and uh, you know uh, in in the morning when they wake up uh, the first thing that they see is the green greenery and the wetland so uh, this is how the changes are coming 
and uh, this is all because of the community support and uh, the community and park is now living uh, in a in a very good i mean they, they are collaborating very well so uh, there were some issues but now uh, still there are some issues like in phase 2 there is no boundary walls so people are throwing their garbage inside and these days there are lots of fruits uh, on the bay tree so people are plucking and every time in evening when we go we just give uh, you know talk to them politely that uh, if you want to see birds if you want this as a very you know popular and uh, as, as a as a tourist place so you should protect all these things so now i mean changes are coming but yes it always take a time for all these things thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much priti so it was certainly a very informative and enlightening session and Thank you. the takeaway for the students here are, is not just wrapped about the Yamuna Biodiversity Park, but the speaker itself is a very a source of enlightenment for the students. Because ours is an arts college and generally students ask how we are going to pursue our career environment. So I must tell you students that Preeti has done her master's MA in environment studies. She is not from pure science background, but still she is a nature nature officer. So she ha uh, has uh, she has worked hard and uh, she has secured a good position in Yamuna Bhattacharya. And, and despite being from arts background, she has so much of knowledge uh, about the species, their conservation. It's really uh, like it's it's so nice to see her talking about this thing. And uh, of course, she has imparted a great knowledge to our students. Uh, one thing, Preeti, I would like to ask on behalf of our institute, how can we collaborate with Yamuna Biodiversity Park? As an institute, if I ask, can Delhi University College collaborate with Yamuna Biodiversity Park in the aspect that uh, they provide certain uh, uh, herbal trees to us or look after or suggest our uh, greenery thing in our college? Is there a certain mechanism for that? Yes, yes, we are we are doing it. Uh, like uh, we have uh, helped um, uh, this Lakshmi Bai College in constructing a small wetland inside and we are helping Aditi Mahavidyale in setting up a herbal conservatory. So uh, you can write to us for the plants or for any kind of help. Our scientists, they can visit or uh, they can, you know, uh, or you can visit the park along with your uh, team and you can take some of the plants or from Kamla Nehru Ridge, usually we arrange medicinal plants. So Professor Dr. A.K. Singh is there. So he usually guides for the medicinal plants. So for any kind of help or any kind of plantation inside your college, you can write to us or you can come. Thank you, thank you. Uh, over to you, Yogita. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it has been such a privilege to organize and be a part of this event. And on behalf of Department of Environmental Studies, I would like to thank and share a heartfelt gratitude uh, for towards our principal, Professor Nirmal Jindal, for always supporting such initiatives. I would like to thank our special guest, Ms. Preeti Bohra, who took out time from her busy schedule to interact with our participants. The virtual tour of Yamuna Biodiversity Park was a very refreshing and filled with awareness towards our nature. Sincere thanks to Dr. Rajiv Singh, teacher in charge of Department of Environmental Studies, Dr. Anupam Sani, convener of Prakriti Society, and all faculty members under whose constant guidance this talk has been successfully conducted. My heartfelt gratitude to all members of Prakriti Society who ensured success of this event. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Yogita. Uh, before we say final goodbye, I want everyone to switch on their camera so that we can have a group's uh, photograph for our reference. I request everyone, every student and everyone out there to switch on their cameras. Okay, we are good to go. Uh, is somebody clicking the photograph?
Yes, I think they are done. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being patient. And thank you, Preeti, again. Thank you. Preeti. Thank you all the thank faculty you, members. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Sir.